All right, good morning to you, or whenever you might be watching this. Tuesday, May 23rd, we're going to do our devotional today as we read through the Bible in a year, unpacking Scripture, learning it together, understanding the whole Word of God. That's what we're doing here. That's what the focus is. So as you can see, I'm joining you from my hotel room. I am at a Calvary Chapel uh, pastor's conference, and so we're getting filled up over here and singing to the Lord and learning about Him and growing in relationships, so all good things. Uh, but I'm here this morning uh, from the hotel room going to do this devotional with you and be with you and unpack some scripture together. So um, our readings for today are Leviticus 26 and 27 and Psalm 50 and Psalm 51. So if you can get your Bible, we're going to be in Psalm 51. All right, Psalm 51. So uh, let's open up in prayer, and we're going to dig into God's Word and see what the Holy Spirit draws out. So Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your Word, for your truth. Thank you for another day, Lord. We awake, we, awake, we awoke, Lord. We're um, going to engage in another day, and it's a gift from you. And i um, glad to be alive, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that we'd be able to use this day for your glory, that you would breathe life on it, Lord, that we... Uh, would take steps of faith, Lord, that you would guide our prayers and conversations and our steps, Lord. Use this day unto your glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Psalm 51. This is unfortunately a highlight of David's life that I'm sure he wishes was not a highlight, something he wished he did not do. Um, to read the full context of the story, you have to read 2 Samuel chapters 11 to 12. And essentially, here's what David did. Um, David committed adultery. Um, then David committed murder. And then D David did all that he could to hide it. And unfortunately, he did not come clean on his own. He came clean and admitted what he did, really only after he got caught. A prophet named Nathan was aware that David had done these things and was hiding them and God told the prophet Nathan and Nathan had a way of bringing it up before David and then David even denied it at first and then and then he finally was honest and so um, not a highlight in his life um, but we learned some really interesting things about this psalm because David is now crying out in prayer because he has known and now it's in the light, and now that it's known and in the light, um, now he's really broken. And um, you know, in life, um, obviously, this these are some big issues. This was a pretty serious affair. This is murder. Is to to compound it. That's like crazy, and then to hide it. And boy, it's a bad situation. These are big failings, and. Certainly all of us go through failings at some point, some bigger than others. But we learn, we learn some things from this psalm about um, how to view failings and um, how to view our shortcomings. And, and I think it's going to be helpful and really valuable. So uh, let's, let's read this psalm, which is essentially a prayer, a prayer of repentance, a prayer of forgiveness, a, a, just a real crying out before the Lord. So what kinds of things does he say? What kind of things would you say? Um, what would be the posture of your heart? What is the posture of his heart? <clears throat> I can tell you this, that typically uh, when people fail, whether it's uh, bigger or smaller, but we're looking at the bigger issues here, so that's kind of what we'll focus on. But when people fail, and it's big, um, and for the most part, the truth is out and things are out in the open, for a decent amount of people, there's a lot of blame. Well, I would not have done this if someone didn't say that, or I would not have done this or acted that way if this person didn't do that, or, or I would not have, um, and then they just fill in the blank with blaming. So it's like they, maybe, they partially own it, but they're so busy blaming everybody else for what they did, they're basically saying, hey, my reason really for doing this is because and then they say uh, whatever their reason is, and really they're just blaming somebody else or some other situation. 
and usually that's under the guise of well I'm just trying to help you understand why I did what I did and and uh, there's not a lot of ownership there's not a lot of humility or honesty and typically um, there's not a lot of uh, really admitting that it was sin and that it was sinful and that there's a big issue between caring about the sin that was committed and done being sensitive and being hurt by that versus having it be out in the open oh man everybody knows now and who knows what my consequences are going to be so now i'm like really freaking out and what we're going to find as we read through this psalm it was the sin piece that really bothered David, that he sinned against the Lord. It was his actions. He did it. He's not blaming anyone, which is, um, that's worth something right there. Uh, but it's his sin. Like, he knew that he sinned. He did it. He chose. And he wishes that wasn't in him. And he's like, you know, where did, where did that come from? And, and, and he knows where it came from. And so he's struggling with that. And um, so... He's not. We're not going to hear anything about his consequences. Oh, so now that everybody knows, Lord, oh my goodness, hopefully this person doesn't know, and then hopefully, uh, you know, this consequence won't play out. And um, now he's grieved by his sin and what he did and, and some of these big failings. So that's important for us, that, that when we mess up, when we have issues, when there's failings, that there's ownership. And then there's this revealing piece of what, what uh, is it the sin? Uh, that bothers us that concerns us like the sin got us to the point to do what we did or what happened like where'd that come from what happened on the inside of us that somehow we were able to let you know these things happen or take place that should be the part that really grieves us um certainly we'll be aware of the consequences and, and the things that that now might arise because of what we did but that shouldn't be the primary factor and typically if it is it is possible we're not that sorry, and uh, it is possible we're really more concerned about ourselves than what happened inside of us and, and how we offended God. So pretty interesting, but let's, let's read it here. Psalm 51, verse 1. Have mercy upon me, God, according to your loving kindness. Jeez, this is him just pouring his heart out. Man, like, Lord, I, I messed up. I'm sorry. Please have mercy on me according to how loving you are according to the multitude of your tender mercies and god does have tender mercies david is appealing to the tender nature of god and he definitely has one he says blot out my transgressions wipe out my sins and where i failed lord just man just wipe these things out wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin strong language here where he's saying this is my sin my shortcomings this is my issue i did it and you're the only one lord that can clean and make someone clean and wash them so so please help me with that lord please he says i acknowledge my transgressions i'm aware of my shortcomings yep it was me that did it and my sin is always before me and you know he can't get away when he says his sin is always before me it's so he's thinking about it. It's there. He knows he did it. He's, he's having a hard time wrestling with it. Um, verse 4, he says, Against you, you only, have I sinned. Very interesting language, huh? He's not making excuses. He's not playing the blame game. He's saying, Lord, it was against you. I love you, Father. I, I stand for you, Lord. My whole life has been about you. And I primarily sinned against you first. Against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and my in my and in sin my mother conceived me. And he's not saying like um, his conception, his birth was like a sinful relationship between his parents. He's saying that sin has always been a part of his life. Like when he was born, sin was present. And he's aware of that and he's realizing um, this, uh, you know, in this moment. And thinking about it further. Um, verse 6, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. 
and in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. See, this is the part that was really bothering David is that on the inside, it was, it was ugly. Somehow it got to a point where um, there should have been red flags going off. There should have been, um, there should have been a sensitivity and, and it all got bypassed. He committed these actions and maybe there was some sense of what was right or wrong was going on, but for whatever reason on the inside, it wasn't enough to stop him. So he just continued. And, you know, he's realizing as he's sitting repentful here, you know, that, man, you desire truth on the inside part, not just behaviors that look like they're true, not just language that looks like it's true and good, but, but Father, you desire on the inside for truth to dwell there because when it dwells and it's there, um, that then enables us um, to not fall victim to the sin, to uh, not be controlled by it, to then not follow through on behaviors and things we, we know we shouldn't be doing in the first place because our heart's desire and the appetite on the inside is not to fulfill that sin as those things. It's, it's a different appetite. It's a holy one, a righteous one before God if there's truth on the inward parts. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. And that's the idea. Wisdom comes um, from the inside. And as we are New Testament believers, which David was not, he had the Holy Spirit upon his life. But New Testament believers, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Um, and when we give time to cultivate and nurture the work of that Holy Spirit, wisdom does come from the inside, getting transformed from the inside out. It says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Um, we know from the old hymn, that's exactly what God does through Jesus Christ. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities, right? The man is heartbroken. He's realizing, he's now he's really realizing after the actions he did, and the time of cover-up that he had, it's, it's hitting home now because now it's hit the light and some people know. And, uh, all right, he's just broken here. And, 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 you know, this is obviously not a great place to be in, but it's a place he needs to be in. And this place when we fail, we need to be in. We need to be broken um, by our sin and, and see the depth of it and see it for what it is um, because that's God's vantage point. That's what he's seeing. That's what he's noticing. And, and as soon as we start to leave that sensitivity and we become um, maybe numb or a little bit callous to sin, um, that's when we know we're, we're really in trouble. It should bother us, especially on the bigger ones like this. You know, this, this should bother us. So here's one, his prayer in verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. What a fantastic prayer. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. He's saying, Lord, create a clean heart of me, something brand new. Please don't take me from your presence. I know I'm not worthy to be in your presence, but Lord... Especially now, Lord, I always knew I wasn't worthy to be in it, but now I'm well aware. So, Lord, please don't take me away from your presence, and please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore, restore me to the joy of your salvation, and and uphold me. And, and then he says, I'm going to testify. I'm going to teach people what, you, who you, what you're like and um, what your heart is like. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, verse 14. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall, shall show forth praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. So he's saying, I could go through the motions and just be religious. I could just give the sacrifices. I could say the prayers. I could uh, eat the clean foods. I, I could go through the motions. I could do it. And back to he has been doing it for a while um, as he's sitting with the knowledge and understanding of what he has done. Here's what he realized. He said, yeah, I could do that stuff, but 
you're finding no joy in that, just going through the motions and knowing full of my heart what's going on and what I have chosen and have done. He realizes this, verse 17. The real sacrifices that God really cares about. It's not matter how many doves or bulls or whatever pigeons being sacrificed at what time. And here's what we God cares about, verse 17. And those things were prescribed by the law, so he does care and they do matter, but they're not a substitute. Verse 17, he says this, The sacrifices of God are this, a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Um, These, O oh God, you will not despise. A broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, um, a humbled heart, a broken heart, a broken spirit. One is that is grievous over uh, the sins and the offenses that we have willingly done towards the Lord. Um, that's what God responds to. So you can sacrifice all the bulls, the pigeons. You could give 20%, 30%. Um, you could show up for 100 prayer times. You could do all these religious things but what he cares for is he cares that his people are grievous and heartbroken over the same sin that God is grievous and heartbroken and angered by that and the same sin would eventually cost the life of our Savior Jesus Christ and so sin um, should be especially our own personal willful sin especially when we try to cover it up and do worse things about it Man, this should break our hearts. It should break our hearts. It shouldn't be a cause um, for blaming and cause to be mad at everybody else for the decisions that we made. It should and hopefully does cause us to say, man, I sinned against you and you alone, Lord. At this, yeah, There's lots of, lots of factors and lots of things, Lord, but I made the choices. I made the choices and, and I knew better and... Um, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Father, for taking advantage of your mercy and your grace and thinking that in some way uh, I could live like this with my sin and get away with it. And, you know, because someone could make the case and the point. They'd be like, well, listen, if God didn't speak to Nathan, was David ever going to say anything? I don't know. I don't know. And again, that doesn't make David look great. Maybe he would have. I'd like to hope that he would, but who knows? Um, but thankfully, God did speak to Nathan, and thankfully, uh, David did confess, even if it was kind of forced out of him. Um, but God, God heard him, and, and, and you could tell as David pours out his heart here, uh, I, I think there's some real sincerity and genuineness happening here. So the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then they shall offer bulls on your altar. So, what a passage about sin and about ownership. Um, it, uh, this quote here from G. Campbell Morgan says this, this great song, pulsating with the agony of a sin-stricken soul, helps us to understand the stupendous wonder of the everlasting mercy of our God. And yeah, he is merciful. He is merciful. He is gracious. He does make our sins as white as snow. He actually does blot out our sins, our iniquities. Um, the Bible says he separates our sins as far as the east is from the west. He does these things. Um, this is what he does. But our hearts have to be broken. Um, there has to be true repentance. There has to be a humble, a broken, a contrite heart and spirit that just realizes, man, Lord, I fall far short and my sin is offensive to you. And I'm so sorry for continuing it <laughs> or living and doing the things that I've been doing. And uh, this psalm just, just paints a lot of that really well. So, um, of course, it's my hope and prayer um, that you don't make major failings, that your heart 
You've been cherishing truth in your heart and in the inmost places so that when you're really tempted with some really big things that you don't fall into these things. My prayer and hope that you don't. Um, if someone happens to, if you happen to, um, I hope and I pray that the Spirit of God will make you courageous to the, be the one that, that comes out with all honesty at first. And then um, it's my hope and prayer that you're not blaming everybody else for your failings and that you recognize that it was your sin. You sinned against God. You made these choices. And sure, there might be lots of reasons for why maybe you're in that mental state and made that decision, but they're all excuses. And um, before God, excuses don't hold up. You know, just come broken to him. Come broken to him. He does restore. He does wash clean. And sure, some consequences might play out. And hopefully, and I pray that's not your number one concern. I hope really your main concern is what got you to that point, why and how you did those things, and uh, maybe even go uh, to therapist or meet with friends to try and get a better understanding for how really all of these red flags got bypassed and how they, all of these warning signs just really got dismissed as you continue through with your action. That's all healthy and good to process that with someone to try and figure out, like, why did I allow these behaviors? Why did these things come out? Um, but blaming and making it try to seem like um, everybody else is your problem and their reason for why you did what you did it doesn't work before the Lord uh, it doesn't work and as many parents tell their children you know you're responsible for your behavior and um, so may God help us may God help us and you know I think about Peter man what, what a what a man, what a life, what an apostle. You know, Peter, um, he uh, denied Jesus three times. Wow. He suggested that there was another way for Jesus to um, save mankind and, and be Messiah, something other than the cross. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Um, he, uh, he had a at the Mount of Transfiguration, he suggested some craziness that Jesus was like, what are you talking about, you know? But um, Peter, you know, had these failings, had these issues. And, you know, it actually reminds me about, you know, one of these uh, speakers I talked about uh, one of the other days, one of the other nights, that he said, um, he said, you know, do we love him any less? Do we love Peter any less? Do you think God loves him any less because of his failures, his shortcomings? Do we love David any less because of his shortcomings and failures and and the reality is I don't think we do I actually think it makes us appreciate them more and so the reasoning should not be well listen I should sin bigger and then um, you know people appreciate me more and God will use me more and no not at all I mean I, I wish they I wish David didn't make these decisions that's put his family through some horrific stuff put himself through some horrific things you know it, then he ends up marrying who he had the affair with and then they, they lose their child and this is a rough, rough, difficult time. Uh, but the idea is try to live an honest life, a life full of integrity, a life that understands it's before the Lord and that truth on the inmost parts is what the Lord desires. And that's the thing that will really set us free. We're walking in freedom when we're valuing truth on the inmost parts. And, and God already knows, but it's important for us to live as transparent and vulnerable and open to the Lord um, as we possibly can. It uh, helps us live in freedom. So an interesting psalm, a rough patch, a difficult part of David's life, but certainly God, and the way God does it, he's merciful and he is um, gracious and he is compassionate and broken hearts that are broken for the things that they have done before the Lord and he's aware of. He's not interested in making them to suffer in shame forever. God is interested in extending his grace and bringing forgiveness and restoring. And so it's important for you and I to know that, to believe that. It's also important for you and I, if, if we're not the ones maybe that have done this, but we know somebody, it's important for us to extend that same heart towards them like God would extend towards us. It's important for us to become the forgiveness that we have received through Jesus Christ.
So a psalm in a chapter like this opens up a whole bunch of things, a whole bunch of needed and important things, though, um, themes and topics of forgiveness and sin and ownership and truth, all very important. So I hope something from here is a blessing to you. I hope that you can be encouraged with it. Again, like I share each time, please take something from this uh, devotion this morning and share something with somebody, an encouragement somewhere. Shoot a text, make a call, something in some way. Don't hold it to yourself. Spread his truth, spread his word. So let me pray for us. God, thank you for your truth. Thank you for your word. And um, I thank you, Lord, that you're merciful and gracious. And we are not interested in taking advantage of that. And we don't want to be so arrogant to think that you don't know what's going on. And you're not aware. You are. And um, Lord, help us to be an honest people who values truth. Help us to walk before you, Lord, with great honesty, Father. And um, we thank you, Lord, for being merciful and gracious and compassionate towards us, these clay pots, Lord, that you made from the earth. Thank you, Father. And help us to also carry your love and forgiveness and your kind of heart towards the world around us. In Jesus' name, amen. So God bless you guys. I hope that uh, this Tuesday is a blessing to you. Like I said, take something from this and encourage somebody. God bless you.